all right um grace grace to you good people of the gospel prophets fraternity yeah um gospel prophets 41 episode 41 as we continue with our study through the book of song of solomon chapter by chapter verse by verse and on episode 41 we are going to focus on song of solomon chapter 1 verses 7 and verses 8 two two verses today that i'm going to focus on this week and i believe that um it's going to bless us because of the value or the richness you understand of this portion of scriptures and i believe it's going to bless us hallelujah and if you missed the previous episodes um 38 39 40 of which are in song of solomon please i would encourage you to go and listen just you know go to my youtube channel and just type gospel prophet 38 you you will see that we follow through um the sequence of things all right so let's dive straight into into verse 7 okay because i'm assuming that you've been following through okay now the shulamite woman continues to uh, sort of, you know, d display her love for her bridegroom and um, to continue showing her, you know, her intentions and her desire and her love for this uh, husband. She says, tell me, O you who, tell me, O you whom I love, where you feed your flock where you make it rest at noon for why should i be as one who veils herself by the flocks of your companions now this is a very important scripture it's so rich that's why i want to focus so much on this okay she has a question where do you tell me where you feed your flock very important where you make it rest at noon for why should i be as one who veils herself by the flocks of your companions all right so christ feeds his flock and makes them rest at noon very important you understand that very important you understand what i've just said because it's going to lay a picture of what i'm going to share the amplified version says addressing a shepherd she said Tell me, O oh, you whom my soul loves, where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. For why should, why should I, as I think of you, be as a veiled one, be as a veiled one, be as a veiled one, straying beside the flocks of your companions? A beautiful portion of scripture. Now, this is rich that's why i cannot go to verse 8 verse 9 this is very rich because i want to dwell there there is a lot for us that we're going to learn today hallelujah so let's first start like this before i get into the into the two questions that she asked it's it's one thing for me to know how to pasture the flock okay and it's another thing for me to lead them to a place of rest are you understanding me so it's one thing to pasture it's one thing for me to pastor you and it's another thing for me to lead you into the place of rest. <clears throat> Very important. The Bible tells us, I think in Psalm 23, from verses 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. Very important. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's, that's, a, that's a sheep who has understood the magnitude of his shepherd. Uh, that's a sheep who has been led into the place of rest. That even though things are tight, they know that they're shepherd with them. Like somehow your, my spirit is present with you even through the troubles and the trials you are going through. You understand you know that my pastor is there you know that my man of god is there you know that uh, through through the words through the summons we are there you understand it's very important so it's one thing for me to pastor you 
And it's another thing for me to lead you to the place of rest. That even when you're going through a hard situation in life, you know that you're coming through because of the things you've been feeding on. Hallelujah. Very important we understand this. Now, let's go back to the place. <clears throat> the two questions, where? That means that there is a place where God feeds men. Now that's important, you understand? Because it says, where do you pasture your flock? That means there is a place in the spirit where God feeds men, where Christ feeds men. You must understand that. You must understand that. There's also a place in the spirit where his sheep find rest. Okay? So it's a place of feeding and it's a place of rest. Those two questions are very important because you must understand that. Do you know the place where God feeds you? And you know, do you know the place where you find rest? So it's very important for you to be told. And it's another thing for you to find rest. You need both. That's the perfect balance. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. But before I get into the, the two places, this veil, okay, the covering in the hair, I mean, on the head, this veil on the face, this veil is not taken away, okay, not until I know the place where you feed me and give me rest, for without these two, I am still veiled. That is what this Shunamite woman is saying. Why should I still be veiled? Why? Because I do not know the place where you feed men and the place where, you, 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 where they find rest. You understand? But if you show me this too, then I believe that my, 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 the veil will be taken away. My eyes will be open. Okay? That thing that you put in the face, eh? that's a veil. Now, walk with me. Walk with me about the veil because it's very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verses 13, we are going to read the story of Moses. The Bible says, Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. That was the law. The law was passing away. It was coming to the end. That's a spiritual <clears throat> connotation. Verse 14. But their minds were blinded. Now that's important you understand. Their minds were blinded. For until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Hallelujah. So if you're reading the law, the veil is still there, but the veil is taken away in Christ. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, this is why she is... She, the, 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 the Shulamite woman is asking Christ, the place where he feeds men and gives them rest. I understand. Let's continue. In verse 15, 2 Corinthians 3, it says, But even to this day, when Moses is read, that's the law, yeah? The old covenant, right? When the law is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That when you turn to the Lord, Jesus Christ, the message of His grace, the new covenant, then the veil is taken away. And if that veil is taken away, then you can know. You understand what I'm saying? So there are people who still don't know the truth because they have not considered this very thing. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the woman is talking about her veil. Why should I be as one which is veiled? You understand? I need this veil to be taken away because if this veil, it, if this veil is taken away, then I will know where you pass your men and where you take them while to rest. Very important. I will know. She's saying, my veil is still on and it can only be taken away when I come to the place where you feed and teach me, to that place of rest, to that place of rest. For unless I come to that place, I uh, will forever have this veil on. I need this veil to be taken away. Just like many of us today need this veil to be taken away. Understanding the message of His grace. The grace of God in truth. 
because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And some of us have not understood this gospel of the grace of God because it's a revelation. Christ is a revelation. Truth is a revelation. The gospel is not an assumption. The gospel is a revelation. If you're still reading the gospel as an assumption, then you still have the veil. But when you realize this and your eyes are open, then it becomes revealed to you because truth, when we say truth, we were not only saying truth as, as merely spoken truth, but truth as divinely revealed to your spirit. That revelation, okay, is what takes away the veil. Then you know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You understand what I'm saying? So you must understand the gospel of the grace of God, the, the, the New Testament realities, the present truth. You understand, for example, the Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. Now, that is truth. But you have cancer in your body. Yes, you have cancer in your body, but the Bible says that you were healed. Now, if the veil is not taken away, you will not believe it. You will still think that you're sick. You understand? Because you need the veil to be taken away. Christ in you, hallelujah, Christ in you doesn't fall sick. So you stand on the truth and say, Father, I refuse this sickness because the Bible says, by his stripes I was healed. You don't pray for healing. You stand in faith and in truth on what God has already done. You're standing in the truth of God. If you don't understand that, you're not going to fight from the place of victory because you're not praying to get healed. You are praying in the healing that was already provided for by Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. So you're not praying to get healed. You're praying because you are healed. You understand what I'm saying? You stand on the truth and that truth makes you free. It doesn't mean that you won't have pains in your body. That's a fact. But the truth is you were healed. You understand? So if you don't get that, the present truth then you, you're, you're still veiled. Your mind is still blinded to truth. You understand? So it's very important to understand this thing. That's why the Shulamite woman is saying, man, take me to that place where you feed men so that my eyes will be open and I shall know the truth and the truth shall make me what? Free. Glory to God. Very important. We understand what I've just said. Very important. Very important. So, when I come to that place, all right, the place where you feed men and the place where you, where you take them to, fight, to rest at noon, I will have this veil taken away. Now listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verses 3, the Bible says, but even if our gospel is veiled, uh-huh, now I'm talking about the gospel now, right? But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Uh, to those who are perishing. For, you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes will not perish. You understand? So it is, it, is, it, is, it is veiled, okay? To those who are perishing. Verse 4. Whose minds, uh -huh, whose minds the, God of the, the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, Lest the light of the gloss, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Whose minds the God has what of this age has blinded. That means they are veiled. Their mind cannot see. They are veiled. Their minds cannot see. To solve the kulaba because it is a veil. Or in each kuyamba day, or Okay, like this, these these weddings. Okay, where you the woman is covered. That's a veil. When, the, when, when now the man is ready to check on the wife, he goes and opens her, uh, her, her, her unveils her, and then she kiss, he kisses the bride. That's what I'm trying to say. That thing is still there. When you're reading the Old Testament, when you're still seeing the Bible as an assumption, when, when you've not understood present truth, you understand when your mind is blinded. Hallelujah. And Satan is doing that thing, doing a very good job. So verse 5, she says, no, verse 5 of Corinthians, it says, For we do not preach ourselves, 
but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your born servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Once this light comes, hits your spirit, the, then you, the veil, okay, is taken away. Then you shall actually know the truth, the gospel in its truth. Okay, so once the veil is taken away, your eyes, which were once blinded by the devil, becomes the wells of light, revelation. Christ becomes a revelation. Truth becomes a revelation. Then you realize that, yes, actually by his stripes, I was healed in the past. That means divine health is my portion, and that's the truth. That even when Abraham was a hundred years, he refused to be weakened in what? In unbelief. Because, yes, the fact was his wife was barren. They were of age. But the truth was that the one who promised him was faithful. We're going to have a child. That's a man whose, whose eyes have been opened to the realities of the spirit. That even though I can see pain in my body, I refuse to persuade because by his stripes I was healed. So healing is mine. Div divine, divine health is my portion. I stand on that healing grace in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse because I am not sick. The body may be, may, may be having pain and issues, but the spirit me is healed. Hallelujah. And I stand on that word because the veil has been taken away. I am above only and not beneath. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You understand what I'm saying? I am more than a conqueror in Christ. Yes, something is happening against me, but I am more than a conqueror. I know that I'm fighting from the place of victory. I am praying from the, from the place of victory because I am fully persuaded that I am. I am not trying to become healed. I am already healed. So I am praying not to get healed. I am praying in the healing that I received 2,000 years ago. That's a man who has understood the gospel in its truth and this gospel is bearing fruit and it is growing by its own inherent power because it sets us free revelation is god's redemptive power if you know that then you understand in present truth you live by what the word of god says the body is in pain but he said no but i am healed the doctor said you have cancer yes that's a fact but i am healed you understand what i'm saying very important very important that's, it. That's why it is important for us to ask that question, Lord, where do you feed men? Because this is revelation. This, comes, this must come to you by revelation. Glory to God. Now, if you really take a closer look on what the Shulamite woman was saying, she's talking about the spiritual vagabonds who wander from church to church. The spiritual vagabonds who are not seeded. They are not planted. Okay? Spiritual vagabonds are, are, are prostitutes. <laughs> they wander from shepherd to shepherd, okay? From pastor to pastor. From teacher to teacher. You understand? From church to church. They come to your church and say, hey, this pastor is not deep. Then they go to another pastor. You understand? It's, they, there is something that is disturbing them. They move from pastor to pastor, from pastor to pastor, and again, until when? You understand? Now, those are people that are not seated. They are not seated and they, they, are not, they haven't submitted themselves under spiritual authority and say, this is my spiritual father or mother and I'm going to sit under this word and be taught. That is very important. You be seated. Find your teacher. Sit under your teacher. Very important because want, we are going to look at that in the next verse. That's why I said I'm going to focus on this too. Now, why do I say that this... Uh, why do I bring the issue of the spiritual vagabonds, the prostitutes, spiritual prostitutes? The NLT version of our main text, first Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 7, says, Tell me, my love, where are you leading your flock today? Where will you rest your sheep at noon? For why should I wander like a prostitute among your friends and their flocks? Why would I wander like a prostitute? Why would I go to teacher after teacher, teacher after teacher, like a prostitute? <laughs> you get it? 
So she wants to follow after one shepherd and wants to know where he where that shepherd feeds so she can be fed and find rest under one shepherd. Very beautiful principle. Now, allow me to say this that there is a place in the spirit where Christ teaches men. Are you being taught by Christ? <laughs> where Christ himself teaches you. And we all must mature to that place whereby you are being taught by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And, 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 and as you're being taught by the Holy Spirit, when you come to church, your pastor should be able to affirm those things which God is teaching you. This is what I do with my spiritual father. That every time I, I listen to him, he is already affirming the things that I already know. The things that my spirit man has received and sometimes... I don't have the full counsel. Then when he's teaching through his sermons, I get the counsel. He affirms and is confirming the things that Christ is teaching me. This is very important. That's why he tells us, read the Bible, study the word. Hallelujah. Come to church and let, let Pastor Adrian, through your bread of life, through gospel prophets and through the Sunday sermons, affirm those things which you are learning. But there is a place where Christ teaches men and there are people who are being taught by Christ himself very important so are you being taught where you go do you go to be taught the ways of god when you go to church you are to be taught in isaiah 2 3 the bible says many people shall come and say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob he will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths he will teach us that's the place where god teaches men so, many go to church, okay, they go to church and fail to connect with the heart of the shepherd who is there to show them the way of God. Okay, if you're, if you're planted, if you're submitted under me, then you must know the heart of the shepherd. Why do I say the things that I say? Why do I focus on certain things? Get to know my heart, the voice behind the things that I'm saying. You will be taught. You will understand that God is speaking. <laughs> okay. You understand my heart. That even when you get my bread of, your bread of life and you go and teach, if you do not understand the heart of the teacher in your bread of life, it will not make sense to you when you're preaching to some other people. You understand because you must carry the heart. You must carry the heart of Christ when you go to church. Now, there is a place where and how he teaches men. And he teaches differently because, I'll give an example. The way Jesus taught the 70, the crowd, okay, is different from the way he taught the 12. You understand? Those are different places. And you must understand that. And the way he taught the 12 is different from the way he taught the 3. Peter, John, right? different in germs right so he teaches them differently there's how there's what he tells them he tells the three and doesn't tell the twelve then there's what he tells the twelve he, he doesn't tell the servant hallelujah and then there is a way he teaches the one paul you understand so there is a servant that is for everyone then there is a twelve <laughs> the disciples then there is a three, and then there is a one. Which place do you belong? Are you in the 70, or are you in the 12, or are you in the three, or are you in the one? Now, there is a place where he teaches men. Hallelujah. And all those are dimensions that you need to grow. The spirit of revelation. The first dimension is the 70. That's literal interpretation. Then the second dimension is the one for the 12, where he gives you hints in the Bible. Okay, in Matthew, then you get the hint in, 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 in Hosea, then he gives you the hint in Malachi. He, now he's beginning to teach you a certain way. Then when you come to the third dimension of the, of the, of the three, that he, he starts to teach you through stories, whereby he gives you a different story from the main point and yet in that different story, it is where truth is revealed and, 
and, and, and, and, and, and, and, and revelation becomes deeper. That I can say something, but when I give an illustration, I give a story which has nothing to deal with what I'm saying. And yet in that, you understand, in that story is where the deepest revelation is of the main point that I'm saying. And I, I, I hope you're getting me. And, and, and that's another way of him teaching you. It's a hidden story, but in that, he, he's giving you the main point. That's why he likes teaching parables. You understand? And then this one, it's, it's, it's where he takes you to Bible codes, for example, because the Bible, the Bible is, is, a, is a book of numbers. You understand? He, he, he starts opening you to deeper dimensions, and, and he starts telling you the revelation through maybe codes and numbers. Okay? For example, if I say Acts chapter 8, verses 1, when he tells them that, 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 that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and blah, blah, blah. Acts chapter 8, verses 1. But how was that fulfilled? Then he just switches the numbers to Acts chapter 8, verses 1. Here it was Acts chapter 1, verses 8. He gives them the commission. You shall, not, you mean you, you shall receive power, then you'll go out. How did they, and, and how did they go out? How was that fulfilled from Jerusalem to Judea? When you come to Acts chapter 8, verses 1, where persecution broke out, then you see how that was fulfilled. So Acts chapter 1, verses 8, was a fulfillment in Acts chapter 8, verses 1. He just switched the numbers. That is him teaching you from that fourth dimension through Bible codes. <laughs> 1 John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, you know, that whosoever believes, then 1 John 3, 16, this is love. Then he defines for you that very love, how he laid down his life. That is him teaching you in numbers. 1 John 3, 16, and then 1 John 3, 16, and you're seeing the Bible codes, you're seeing the numbering there. You understand what I'm saying? This is him teaching you in a certain, but you have to come to a certain place. Okay? And so how did he teach Paul? By the spirit of revelation. That's the deepest place. That's the deepest place. In Galatians chapter 1 from verses 11, Paul says, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the place. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And grace is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The grace for you to succeed, the grace for you to do whatever you want is brought to you at that revelation. So there is a place where Christ teaches you. That's the spirit of revelation of himself where he reveals himself to you through the word or through his passion. Very important. Everybody needs to come to this place, especially ministers, that I'm taught by revelation. This gospel prophets has to come to me by revelation. Song of Solomon has to come to me by revelation. Because if I go by literal interpretation, I will not drive you to where I am. Because there is a place where God is teaching me by the spirit of revelation. The revelation of the Christ. That's the place where he teaches men. You must come to that place. Move from the 70. Come to the 12. Come to the 3. And then come to that one. Child of God. Where are you? Because there is a place. I've given you the four places. Pick for yourself where you want to be taught. Hallelujah. So, we move on. So, tell me the place where you make the ship rest at noon. Okay, the place of rest, right? Now, why would she say noon? Because the sun is brightest at noon day. Very important you understand this portion of scripture. Where do we see that? You remember when Paul was giving his story of, 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 of the road to Damascus, his conversion? In Acts chapter 22, verse 6, he says, Now it happened, as I journeyed and came near Damascus, at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. A great light shone at around noon. The divine light of the gospel, the glory of Christ in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am that light. That's the light that shines at noon day. You need that light. Revelation. Revelation. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I hope you're understanding. You, your spirit will get it. Don't worry. Your spirit will get it. But this, this place of rest, 
In Hebrews chapter 4 from verses 1, the Bible says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it, that they preached the gospel, but this gospel didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. But even me, I can preach to you through gospel prophets, but you have to mix this gospel that I'm preaching with faith. Every word you receive, you've got to mix it with faith. Then he says in verse 3, For we who have believed do enter that rest. Are you seeing the place of rest? For we which have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. In other words, the mystery of faith is the place of rest. Faith is the place of rest. That's what the Shulamite woman is saying. Hallelujah. So it's a place of rest where you rest at, at noonday with that glorious light of the gospel, the glory, I mean, the gospel of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we know that now faith is a place of rest. There is a place where he teaches men. That's by revelation. And then there's a place where they rest, and that is faith. The moment you have faith in God, you will rest. Because faith is a place of rest. So, are you kidding me? The reason as to why you're not finding rest, you're not at peace, you are uncertain about the future, it is simply explaining that you've not come to the place of faith. Because if you have put your faith in God, then you will rest in Him. You will rest. So there are very many Christians who have actually not come to that place. Because the Bible says they just shall live by faith. But for them they are living by sight. But now give to be in blah blah blah. They are focusing on what's on the outside. They are living by sight. I'm feeling the pain here. Does God heal me? Hey, all those things. You have not yet come to the place of rest. Because if you fully put your faith in God and through His Word, then you will rest. It's very important. And I want to ask somebody today, are you really, have you really come to the place of rest? Are you really putting your, have you, have, have, have you really put your faith in God? And it's a place that, we, it's, it's, it's not a place of believing, you believed. So I can't say, I am believing God for, for this. No, I believed that was in the past, so I'm walking, but I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm resting in the Lord because I believed. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because I believed. I am more than a conqueror because what? I believed. You understand? I'm in that place of rest. So, Christ feeds his flock and makes them rest at noon. Christ feeds you, child of God, because he's the ultimate seed, and he makes you rest come to me all you labor you all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest that's the place that's the place so those that would be told that would be taught what they are concerned to know and do that must apply to jesus christ and beg of him to teach them and beg of him to tell them because there is a place where he feeds his flock and he makes them rest at noonday. You must have this experience. Christianity is experiential. You must be, you must, you must be taught every day there is, God, there is something new. There is new manner for you every day. That's why I love your bread of life. It has to, there, there, is, there is a word of God for, for, for us every day. We are being taught. We are feeding our spirits. But again, we have a place of rest. So as a leader... I cannot take people to the place I have not been or experienced, for I can only teach as I am being taught. That's why I, that's why I have a higher reference. I have a shepherd. I am submitted to another person who teaches me. Okay, and as I submit to that person, I also teach. Then the Holy Ghost, you understand? Because I can only teach as I am being taught. People can give to you as you are giving. Do you understand? That's just the way it is. 
okay? You, you, you cannot lead others if you're not being led. That means I only lead to the extent that I am being led by somebody. How I follow and submit to my spiritual father is very important. It will determine how those who are submitted to me will follow me. That's just the way of the spirit. You can't, you can't deny it. I only deliver that which has been given to me. You understand? That's just the way of the spirit. So I can only teach you from that place. But I must come to that place and be taught. Hallelujah. Can we move on? Are you seeing how deep this thing was? Verse 8. Now, verse, verse 8 is very important. And why am I going to focus on it so much? Because I want to show you something very important. So, so she asks a question. Now the bridegroom comes for the very first time, by the way. He says, if you do not know, uh-huh, because remember, she's asking the bridegroom, Solomon, the church, Christ, I mean, the, yeah, she's, we are asking Christ, our bridegroom, a question, where is the place where you feed men? And where do you make them lie? She's saying, if you do not know of fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats, feed your little goats besides the shepherd's tents. I'll say it again. If you do not know that place where I feed men, that place where I make them lie at noonday, if you do not know of fairest among women, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the solution. Follow in the footsteps of the flock. Wow. Jesus, where do you feed men? Jesus, where do you make men lie at noonday? He says, if you do not know, follow in the footsteps of the flock. <laughs> follow in the footsteps of, of one of you. So you want to know where I feed men? Follow in the footsteps of the flock which already know. The flock which already gone to that place. Hey, what a principle. What a principle. What a principle. This principle, this is spiritual truth. You must understand this. Here Christ is addressing one which doesn't know and tells them to find a higher reference they can follow and submit to them. Hey, but you'd expect Jesus to... Solomon to take the Shulamite woman, come and I show you. Here is a place where I feed men. He says, no, you follow in the footsteps. In the footsteps. Very important. This is very important. This is a principle that is very important. Very important. Follow in the footsteps of those which went ahead of you who have a testimony of where Christ teaches men. You must understand that. <clears throat> so, he... He, he is showing me where to feed my own also as a pastor. And that is besides the tents of a shepherd whom I'm following. The tents of the one which I have submitted to. For example, let me use my example. I've asked God a question as a pastor. I asked God a, quest a question. God, where do you feed men? And where do you make them lie at noonday? Because... I have, a I have followers, right? So I'm asking God. God says, follow in the footsteps of the flock, but also take your, take your sheep, those that are under you, to also lie beside the tent. That person is following. Take your sheep also there. <laughs> Very important. Now, if you find a man who is not ready to do that, they'll never grow in ministry or in any area of their lives. Okay. Now, can I ask something? But first of all, mind you, my spiritual father is Apostle Grace Lovega. I want to show you something. Why should I get intimidated? Because my seed are listening to Apostle Grace every Thursday, for example. <clears throat> but I'm their pastor. But they're listening to Apostle Grace's sermons. You understand? Why should I get intimidated? Because my seed is listening to Apostle Grace. Now, let me show you why. This is why I'm not intimidated. Apostle Grace is my midwife. He helps me bring forth. Actually, I would encourage everyone submitted to me to listen to Apostle Grace of Fanero Ministries. Very important. If you now have a ministry and you submitted to me, it is very important you listen to, to because I have to take you besides my, ship's, uh, my shepherd's tent. You understand what I'm saying? 
So he is my midwife. He helps me bring forth. I want to read you something in Isaiah 49 verses 20. This is important. He says, the children you will have after you have lost the others will say again in your ears, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. These are my children, my seed, spiritual seed, sons and daughters, right? Then you will say in your heart, who has begotten this for me? Eh? Who? That means I'm not the one who, produ who, 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 who brought them forth. Who has begotten this for me? That's a midwife. Then he says, since I have lost my children and I'm desolate, a captive and wandering to and fro, and who has brought these up? That's the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew word there is a midwife. Who has brought this up? There I was left alone, but these were, these were, where were they? In other words, I'm asking myself, are they captive? Who has brought them up? No, it's my midwife. So I would want, I'm, I'm not intimidated because it is through my midwife that they are brought forth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's very important. Very important. Very important. So if you're a pastor, don't get intimidated when your seed listen to your higher reference. Deeper than you, it doesn't matter. But there is a principle there. By divine principle, it works. I'm not intimidated because they'll leave me. No, there is something that he's going to add to my sheep, to my flock, and I would love him to do that. The Amplified Version, verse 8 says, Song of Solomon, right? If you do not know where your lover is, or you, or you fairest among women, run along, follow the tracks of the flock, and amuse yourself by pasturing your kids besides the shepherd's tent. Adrian, pastor your seed, your children, besides your shepherd, besides Apostle Grace. You understand what I'm saying? A very important principle. To me, for example, Fanero is a benchmark because that is the shepherd that I follow after. He is my teacher. Hallelujah. He is my teacher. So, if you find yourself, for example, as a minister, if you find yourself asking that question, or even in any sphere of influence, in business, uh, in marriage, in your organization, if you find yourself asking the question, where do you feed men? Okay, Lord, where? Show me. Chances are, that you missed an inter, an inter, inter let me say, you missed an, in, an integral part, very important part, which is submission. If you find yourself asking that question, Lord, where do you feed? How, how you know, how, where, where can I learn? Whether in business or something, you missed an integral part, you missed an important step, an important process, submission. You may find that you're not submitted to somebody. Whether it is in business, whom have you submitted to? Who, who is teaching you? Okay. Whom are you learning from? Whom are you looking up to? Even sports. Whom are you looking up, up to? This principle is everywhere. As a pastor, if I, if I find myself asking that question, it means that I missed some integral part, a very important part or stage, which is submission. When you mature, when you mature, sorry, you will find someone to submit to. The moment you grow, if you really want to grow, you will find someone to submit to because maturity is following after. If you, if you want to know that you are mature or mature, okay, you're following after because it takes maturity for you to follow. It takes maturity for you to submit to somebody and let them lead you and guide you. Hallelujah. For those that are submitted to me, it takes maturity for them to say, I'm submitted to this person. It's very important. In John 21 verses 18, the Bible says, I assure you, now this, is, this is Christ. I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, when you were young, you guarded yourself, put on your own belt or, guide, or, or girdle, and you walked about wherever you pleased to go. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will put a girdle around you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Hallelujah. That's the shepherd 
you following in the footsteps of the shepherd. They will direct you and guide you in places you do not want to go, but because you're mature, you will do it. That principle is very important. In business, in your career, wherever you're going, you will find it. You can't escape this. This is not for only pastors. This is for everyone within your sphere of influence. And I want to ask you a question. Are you submitted? That boss, you're following the footsteps of that boss and follow. He, he, he is your boss. He is your boss. Follow the footsteps and submit to that authority. Okay. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> Christ is saying, these are the ones who will lead me to where Christ is. Shulamite woman, these ones who these are the ones who are going to lead you to where I am. They will lead you to the place where I truly pastor. Right. You understand? Now, one thing that I've come to know in my experience of over two years right now, that following after is a sweet experience. Following in the footsteps of another shepherd is a sweet experience. Submitting to a higher reference. Let me tell you something. It's a sweet experience. I love it. Things begin to come easy. They really begin to come easy. It doesn't matter how, you're, how anointed you are. Things won't come easy until you submit to this divine order. Submission is very key. Okay. When you define your teacher, your shepherd, revelation comes easy. You will find rest. And only then will you begin to minister from that place of rest. Then you begin to grow. Very key. I don't make a statement that it's one thing to be nursed in the womb of the church and it's another thing to be fathered into ministry. So you're growing and you're nursed in the womb of the church. But when it comes to ministry, you have to be fathered into ministry. You must be taught. So every minister under me, those that are going to minister under me, they've got to be fathered into ministry. I made a mistake of, of, of starting ministry under the womb of the church. And man, I struggled until I, I found a father in the spirit, my spiritual father, who is fathering me into ministry and saying, this is how you grow. This is how you minister. This is how you understand and you follow in those footsteps. <laughs> That's why I would love my seed to listen to me and Apostle Grace. And once you do that, there is, there is something about that. that I'm, that I'm not intimidated. Please listen. So, Let's come back. It's interesting, by the way, to note that these were the very first words of the shepherd. The law of first mention. The very first words that Solomon spoke was this. And that means it carries with it a pattern. The law of first mention carries with it a pattern. So if this was the first thing that Solomon spoke, it was very important. Because he, he didn't give a seven steps of how to be taught. No, no. He just said, follow in the footsteps. That means to Jesus, this is very important. The very first thing that Christ is talking about is submission. Very important. <laughs> very important. Very important. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, as Pastor Adrian, I... I I don't want to deal with the people that are not submitted, who don't understand the seed principle. You can't come into my ministry if you don't understand this principle. Are you submitted? Have you defined your teacher? Who is your teacher? The message version says, if you can't find me, you see that loveliest of all women, it's all right. So, it's all right. Christ is saying, at the moment, if you can't find me, it's all right. You were seeking and seeking and seeking. God is saying, it's all right. She, then he says, stay with your flocks. Stay with your man and God. 
Stay with your shepherd. Stay. Lead your lambs to good pasture. Stay with your shepherd's neighbors. You stay. You sit under the word. Sit under the word. Listen to the word. You will find me. That's what Christ is saying. Now that's, that's exactly what he wants. He's saying, hang around his, the, the shepherd's neighbors. For example, to me, in my context, it would say, you stay, Pastor Ibrahim, you stay. Hang around some folks of Fanero. Hang around the Fanero people, the Fanero pastors, the, uh, those within Fanero. Just hang around them. And that's why my Zipporah is from Fanero. I have, I have a mom figure spiritually, okay, who speaks us also into my life. And she's in Fanero. I'm hanging around that. You understand? And she teaches me. And whatever she's talking, I keep quiet because she's teaching. I'm hanging around the shepherd's neighbor. You understanding what I'm saying? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. So, seek him while he may be found. But if you can't find him at the moment, as you wait to find him, it's all right. Follow after they which have found him. Follow in the footsteps of your shepherd. You will find him. I have, I have a spiritual daughter who, who, is a, who is an artist. She has a gift of, that's a passion, that's a gift, that's a ministry, that's a call. You understand? But before she steps into ministry and finds God and purpose in that ministry, she has to first stay and just sit under the Word. You understand? As she, as she sits and asks questions, I can see her growing. Her questions are deep. And I'm like, yeah, I'm proud of this lady. She's growing. She's growing. She's following the principle. And that lady is going to do great things in the kingdom of God if she follows the principle, which she's doing. Very important. Very important. Very important. Very important. So, Pastor Adrian, as Pastor Adrian, I believe that this is the wisdom of the ages. It's the wisdom of the ages. There is wisdom in following after them which have found him. There's a certain price. You, there's a certain price you don't have to pay because they, have, they, which you've, they which you're following after have paid the price. There are things that Apostle Grace has paid and that I don't have to pay, that he has gone through because I'm under his cloud. Okay. So if you have not knowledge, Okay, go on your way in the footsteps of the flock. As simple as that. Another version says, You are the most beautiful woman of all. If you do not know where to find me, follow the marks from the feet of the sheep. Follow. I've, I've overlaid my emphasis on this thing because very many people are out of divine thought and pattern through this. And things are not working simply because you, don't, you do not have a higher reference. You've not submitted. You don't submit yourself to anyone. <laughs> even in church, the, your, you, 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 you're not even submitted to your pastor. Now, in most cases, this is the principle given to us as shepherds. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You're saying that. He's talking to the young sheep, of course. They are to imitate because they don't know. And then to the mature ones, he says, he says, imitate God. Why? Because now they know. Okay? They know. So, this is the first instruction that Jesus is giving to the bride. Find somebody who can show you how. Find somebody. And it takes humility. And many have found themselves staying in that mountain for a long time waiting on experience whose seed they carry not, just because they just don't have it. If somebody has got power in the neighborhood and you don't have power, why do you go to the prayer mountain to pray for power? Just go humble yourself and go to your neighbor and say, neighbor, how do I connect to this power? You understand? You can't go to the prayer mountain to look for something that is, that, that is, what, that is next to you. It just doesn't work. God doesn't work that way. Go to the prayer mountain to look for something that is not in your neighborhood. God understands that. Go and export it. I mean, and import it. So, 
it takes humility and many have found themselves staying there but if you can't find me this is for somebody who has really sought God for a long time and they're wondering why if you can't find me it's because there is a principle they have not kept and yet God is a God of principles He's a God of patterns and he will not break it I'll give you one of my favorite uh, scriptures that, that have worked for me. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 5, the Bible says, talking about King Uzziah, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as, and, and as, long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And I'll, I'll put it in my context and, and, and you'll get me later. And he, Adrian, Pastor Adrian, sought God in the days of Zechariah, Apostle Grace, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, as long as I sought the Lord, God made me to prosper. This thing has worked for me. I'll read for you the Amplified Version for you to understand. It says, he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the things of God. Every one of us has got an instructor. That's your teacher. Whether in business in your career, you must have an instructor. Somebody who is above you and will, in, uh, and will instruct you in the things that you're doing. My instructor is Apostle Grace. Who uh, instructs him in the things of God. And the Bible says, And as long as his soul inquired of Yan for the Lord, God made him prosper. I'll read it in my context. I set my, he set himself, Adrian set himself to seek, to seek God in the days of Apostle Grace, who instructed him in the things of God. And as long as he sought, inquired, or yearned for the Lord, God made him to prosper. Fi following in the footsteps of your shepherd. This is the principle God is talking about. Christ. It, it, it works. So the king followed in the footsteps of the one which knew the ways of God. This is something that is working for me. And I know that I carry its seed. And it is something I can preach because I'm seeing the results in my life. I'm seeing the growth and I'm seeing how I am growing as a minister, fastly as a minister, very important. <clears throat> That's why, for example, I have a testimony about the impact of your bread of life in the lives of people. Why? I simply followed in the paths of my father to have daily devotions. He has daily devotions, and so I also have daily devotions. <laughs> you understand? So the grace that is working on him on daily devotions is the same grace that is working on me through your period of life. Why? Because I'm following in the footsteps of my shepherd. Are you hearing me? For over a year and a half right now, I have been feeding. Every day you find there is going to be a bread of life. Why? Because my breasts are full. The place where, uh, where people nurse and, and come and feed, it's full. Because I've learned to follow in the footsteps. If I didn't follow him, believe me, there wouldn't be a bread of life. It wouldn't be there. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so God is saying, if you don't know how to reveal me, if you don't know how to make me known, Follow after one which is revealing and making people known. As simple as that. Carry your pride. Swallow your pride and go to somebody and say, which call out here, teach me. Then you sit under the word. Whether it is in business. This is in, this is in, in every sphere. Whether you're an artist or a businessman, whatever it is, follow. Proverbs 21, 20, the Bible says, There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. I'll explain. The first time that I sat with my spiritual father, there was treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. Now, instead of me, for example, instead of me just sitting and let the big man talk to me, I also want to find myself talking and talking and talking and talking. In talking, I am spending it, the oil that is to be desired, and I miss out. The Amplified Version says, There are precious treasures and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a self-confident and foolish man swallows it up and wastes it. So why would you swallow it up? When you're under people who, are, who, who, who have gone ahead of you, learn, stop talking, talk less, hear more. Because if you talk more, you're going to spend. If you talk less, you will desire and, and you'll attract the anointing that is working in them. Ask the right questions. <clears throat> Ask the right question. 
So the question to ask myself, the question for you to ask, am I feeding in the footsteps of the one which knows? Am I following after the footsteps? Yes, I'm in this business, but am I following in the footsteps of the one which knows? Because this, this is about you copying and pesting. Okay. And then take your sheep beside the shepherd's tent. That's the temple. Figuratively, it's a temple. That means, as a pastor, I've, I lead them beside the temple. For example, when there is men gather, which is in Fanero, I take them. <laughs> when there is migrant price, I make sure they go. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? The anniversary, I make sure they go. Hallelujah. Very important. I'm not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. So listen, sit under the direction of good ministers. Now, for you who's receiving this and you're not a minister, you're not a pastor, what's the principle? Sit under the direction of good ministers. If I'm a good minister, sit under me. If I'm not your father, at least I'm your mentor. Listen. But for me, it seems like, although it's the first thing he, he'll require of all of us because we all begin as babes. We all begin as babes. And all babes, we can't claim to know. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh, I love this. I, I love this. So, when God came to me, through somebody said, you, 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 you seek him. I said, no, you seek him. For me, maybe this, this was one of his definitions of seeking him, one which I surely missed at the start. That in reality, I have found out that this is his understanding of what it means to seek him. Seek him in, seeking him for me in that meant that I find somebody who's already walked in the footsteps by following then he can take me to where I find him. So in seeking God under the... So it is seeking God under the instruction of which has already walked in the footsteps. I'm, I, I'm, I'm following after and I'm seeking God through the instructions of somebody who has already been there. Okay. It is not something that God will do it for me by himself, but will allow me to find somebody whom I can follow. That is seeking. So in seeking him... He wanted me to connect to a, foot, to a footprint, to a footprint, right? One which has been established in the spirit. He's telling me to not to, uh, he's telling me not to have my own, but to connect to an existing footprint in the spirit and start from there because that's the family of God. So, and by the way, it should be noted that there are footprints in the spirit and it is wisdom to connect and submit to the pattern. So I found a pattern through Fanero. That's a benchmark for me. I was seeking to create my own footprint, but it doesn't work that way. No wonder I failed and struggled. Because every womb is as a result of an old womb. These old wombs are what I'm calling the footsteps of they which have gone ahead of you. And it takes maturity for one to follow in the footsteps of another. I'll keep saying those things. So... Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the things that guarantees success for any minister, that you find your teacher and follow in your footsteps and follow in their footsteps. Jesus is saying, if you don't know, go find a teacher. Define a teacher. Hallelujah. My seed will grow because it's an environment which has been defined for them. Hallelujah. So it's interesting to know that it is the place I get to go with my gods, those which are mine. Those which are mine will go with me. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, I'm done. I hope that I've made sense for us today. I hope I've made sense. I really hope that I've made sense. Really, really hope I've made sense. So, follow the culture today. Listen to this thing. Send it to a friend. Invite them to come. And if this has blessed you, so into it, so into it, so into it. Father, we thank you for this teaching. It's a blessing and we have learned, Lord. We give you praise and give you honor. In Jesus' name and everybody say it. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you and the best is yet to come. Bye-bye.